Hey what's up you guys, it's Sophie and today I wanted to talk about living in New York City. I get questions all the time from you guys about different things about, different aspects about living in the city, getting an apartment, getting around the city, food, things to do, everything like that. I thought I would make an all encompassing video to just talk about all of those points and basically what it's like to live in New York City. So let's just get started. So I thought I'd talk about public transportation first, that's probably the easiest one to talk about and the ways to get around New York City are subways, city bikes, taxis, Ubers, uh, let's see, I have it written down, or buses. I never take the bus, so I always forget that one. My main mode of transportation in the city is the subway. A lot of people find the map really confusing, but once you get it down, it is just the best mode of transportation. The problem is that there are certain lines that are notorious for being delayed all the time, but I think even with delays, it's way, way quicker than any other form of transportation getting around the city. Uh, my main problem with it, actually, is that it's really, really hot in the summer, so uh, traveling around the city in the summer is really torturous. Our subway, uh, like the, the cars, the new cars are air-conditioned, but the, the stations aren't, and it's just torture. Uh, but subways are my favorite. I'm scared of city bikers, because biking in the city is terrifying. Uh, I prefer taxis to Ubers, just because I like the experience better of a classic taxi, and I've never personally taken the bus, but I know that it is helpful if you're trying to get across town rather than uptown and downtown. Next, I thought I would talk about finding an apartment in New York City. I probably should have started with that, but yeah. Uh, there are multiple ways to find an apartment. I know most people who are, you know, probably trying to get an apartment in New York City don't currently live there, meaning that you have to do a lot of your legwork online. And there are good sites that a lot of my friends have used that are really reliable. Uh, my two favorites when I was looking for apartments to use were NakedApartments.com and StreetEasy.com. Uh, I found those to be the best in terms of you can choose um like the most amount of things that you want. So you can say like, oh, I want it in this location. It needs to have a washer and dryer. It needs to have a doorman. It needs to have an elevator. You can make it very specific on those two sites. And I like them both a lot. And I had brokers who were really responsive on those. Obviously, you can also get no fee apartments with no brokers. Uh, that's really difficult. And I don't really know anyone who's had success with that. Maybe I do, but I'm. it's not that common, I think, to not use a broker at all. Um, but there are ways, you know, to get broker fees down, and as a student, they have student discounts a lot of the time, which is nice. And yeah, those are the two websites that I recommend using. Um, I don't know a ton about the broker process in general, and uh, it's okay if you kind of mess it up your first time. I messed mine up a little bit my first time using a broker, and that's all right. Uh, but those are the two websites I would recommend in terms of looking for apartments and figuring out kind of your price range. I mean, the price ranges for apartments in New York City are absolutely crazy. Some of the neighborhoods are really, really expensive, so you just gotta figure out which neighborhood you want, you know, which subway you need to be on to get to work or school or anything like that. Oh, you can also look on Craigslist for apartments. I know people do that, but I have never used Craigslist. Uh, I thought I would mention my favorite spots in New York City if you are traveling here or have or planning to move here and just don't know a lot. So I have a list right here. Sorry if I keep looking down. Um, one of my favorite spots in the city is Chelsea Market, which used to be not that touristy and is now more touristy, but uh, usually what I will do if I'm going to Chelsea Market is I'll walk the High Line and go to Chelsea Market for food. Uh, my favorite food spot in there is a taco place. I don't really think it has a name, but it has like always a really long line and like tacos and quesadillas, and it's just so good. One of my favorite sit-down place in Chelsea Market is Friedman's. There's a great flea market in there also. Tons and tons of food, like a lot of different food options. A great bookstore. Uh, what else? It's just like cool in there. There's an anthropology. Um, just great stores. And then it's right underneath the High Line. So you can just walk the High Line like all the way uptown or if you're coming from uptown all the way down. Not uptown, midtown. All the way down to meatpacking. And it's just, it's really nice. Date idea. It's also good with friends. It's just good for all times really because it's really nice over there. Uh, also uh, a spot that I love is the Met Metropolitan Museum of Art which is on the Upper East Side I think. Uh, yeah, Upper East Side. I absolutely love it there. I've been there a dozen times and have still never seen everything. Uh, the roof is great if you ever go go to the roof. I also love the uh, Greek sculptures. What else? The um, Egyptian uh, section is really great and also they always have a fashion exhibit over the summer months uh, that is really great to check out as well. Walking across the Brooklyn Bridge is another one of my favorite activities and I think it's great to walk across the Brooklyn Bridge and then hang out at the Brooklyn Bridge Park area. There's like carousel, there's food, uh, there's Smorgasburg, Smorgasburg, I don't know how to pronounce that, if you're there in the summer which has great food and uh, Brooklyn Bridge is just 
one of the most beautiful bridges ever. It's a really long walk, so I would say don't do it on a really hot day, but it is beautiful. Other parks that I love, Washington Square Park, obviously, because that's where NYU is, and it's a great park. Uh, the Hudson River Parks have, like, ice skating and bowling and mini golf and, like, a lot of different activities, beach volleyball. Like, there are different piers along the Hudson River that are all called, like, the Hudson River Parks, and, oh, those are so great. I've been there multiple times to go to different, you know, ice skating or a mini golf or anything like that, and they are really fun and a lot of the activities there are free. I know you can go kayaking for free there uh, so that's a great tip. Um, and then also I love Bryant Park in the winter time because they have a free ice skating rink and then a bunch of like kiosk type shops. There there must be like a hundred there. There's so many um, different little stores for food and like little desserts and uh, like holiday gifts and like jewelry and candles and like everything. Oh, it's so great at Bryant Park. That's one of the best parks. Oh, by the way, if you guys want me to make a video all about my favorite places in New York and like film clips from those spots, let me know. I wanted to do that, but I always forget to bring my camera whenever I'm going to one of those spots. Uh, so let me know if you would like to see that in the comments below. So favorite food, I actually don't eat out a lot in New York because um, I have a partial meal plan and I cook a lot. Um, I go food shopping at Trader Joe's and I cook a lot. And just because going out here is really, really expensive and I also just don't have a lot of time with school. But um, some of the places that I love, a lot of these are obviously near NYU, so in like the village area. But one of my favorite spots is the Grey Dog. That's like a really popular NYU spot because literally everything on the menu is amazing and it's all $10. And it's an amazing, amazing cafe. Really hard to get into though, it's really small. Um, Rosa Mexicano is my favorite Mexican restaurant. That is on the expensive end of things. I really only go there with my parents. Uh, and it has great, great Mexican food. Uh, that place is really big, so not hard to get into. Uh, Joe's Pizza is, in my opinion, the best pizza in the whole world. There's one on 14th and 3rd, and then there's one closer to Washington Square Park. And it's just the best pizza in the world. It's $2.75 a slice, which is cheap compared to artichoke pizza, but expensive compared to dollar pizza. And it's just the best the best slice of pizza. It's just like the classic New York City slice of pizza. Uh, for dessert, Big Gay Ice Cream, I live seven blocks from it, which is very dangerous. I get the Salty Pimp if you ever go there. It is the best ice cream ever. Like, the ice cream itself is like normal ice cream, but like their combinations are just like very good. Chelsea Market Tacos, I mentioned, are up there in my favorites. Um, Serendipity was a classic favorite from when I was young. That's like a really famous place. I don't know if you guys have heard of it, but um, it has like, it's like famous for its like really big desserts. Uh, it's really hard to get in there, so make a reservation definitely. But uh, it's this really cute, cool, cool. Uh, like tiny little cafe that's very like special um, and even though it's gotten a lot more touristy I still think it's a very special place and the atmosphere of it is still really great and they're famous for their frozen hot chocolates if you've ever heard of that but I actually recommend getting there's like a black forest cake dessert and that's my favorite thing there oh and the best cookies in the whole world are at Levain Bakery uh, I've actually never been to the Levain in the city I've been to the one in the Hamptons but the one in the city I'm sure is exactly the same and the chocolate peanut butter chip cookie is the best cookie I've ever had in my life. Uh, just some tips maybe if you're planning on living in New York City, one thing that you want to consider when looking for an apartment is noise. Noise is a really huge factor here. Uh, I used to live on 14th Street and I also used to live on 23rd Street and like 3rd Avenue and those are some of the like noisiest blocks in this area because there are blocks that go two ways and if you're on a block that goes two ways, um, the chances are that like there will be a lot of like uh, fire trucks on that block and a lot of heavy traffic because a lot uh, most streets only go one way so something to keep you know that's something to think about like the where I'm living right now is surrounded by a lot of trees which is a lot quieter and it's a lot nicer and it's something that I really didn't think about before I moved somewhere that was less noisy so something to consider if you are affected by those things maybe if you get migraines or you go to bed early or anything like that noise is definitely something to consider and I recommend earplugs also be prepared to walk everywhere I probably should have mentioned that in my like uh, transportation section, but my most, you know, used form of transportation is actually just walking. New York City is a big, the I got all confused there. New York City is a big walking city. I think most people here walk most places, and it's a really walkable city. The grid is really easy to figure out, and most things it's just the easiest to walk to. So definitely something to keep in mind if you're coming from somewhere maybe like LA where everybody drives. Super not like that here. Everybody walks. What else? Some negative things to be aware of. The, the weather. The weather's really bad. It's either like hot and humid and disgusting and you'll be sweating, or it's freezing and but the buildings are still really hot, but it's so cold outside and just like raining and slushy because the snow doesn't get super nice here. Oh, so the weather is not good here. Uh, what else? Uh, it's really noisy. There's lots of people. Um, so it's one of those things where you kind of like 
feel lonely even though there are a lot of people around because it's like you don't know anyone but you're always surrounded by people. It's kind of a weird feeling I feel like. Obviously there are a lot of amazing things that are about living in New York City like I mentioned above but like I mentioned above as if you're reading this like I mentioned earlier but uh, I just thought I'd mention some negatives in case you're planning on or thinking about moving here. Those are kind of some tips and tricks and favorite things uh, all about New York City. If you guys have questions about living here or what to do here or anything like that feel free to leave them in the comments below. I hope this helped you guys out for you guys who have been asking for food recommendations or sites to see or anything like that uh, and I hope you liked this video. If you did please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye!